Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and here are some office romance recommendations. <laughs> So this also could be categorized as a workplace of romances. They're not all necessarily taking place in an office. They're all books where the characters work together. In every single one of these books that I'm about to talk about, the couple work together. Um, so that's kind of like the di a dynamic in and of itself in every single one of these books. They're contemplating whether they can be together because they work together. So I thought we could just dive right on into these books. First, we have A Five Ways to Fall by K.A. Tucker. I love this book. It's been quite a long time since I've read it though. I kind of want to reread it. This is actually book number four in the 10 Tiny Breaths series. You do not have to read the other books to read this one at all. I did not. I read this book first. It's one of my first fully adult romances that I ever read. Um, like I remember going to Barnes and Noble and picking this one out. Um, and I was mainly drawn to the cover, obviously. I love her hair. I love the background. I love everything about the cover of this book. So this really drew me in and I really bought it, read it. one of my first romances that I read. Now, I have since read 10 Tiny Breaths, which is the first book in this series. And I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I do not like that book do not read that one if, if it does not catch your interest you do not need to read them in order they don't correlate basically ever the the hero in this book i think pops up for one scene in one of the previous books possibly i don't know but you don't need to you don't need to read it i don't know but you don't need to read the other ones you could just read this one by itself i did there are no characters popping up here and there. This book is about our main character heroine named Reese and I believe she just got out of a divorce and she decides to move to Miami and start a new life all over. She then goes on a vacation with her friends right before she starts her new job in Miami. She goes to Cancun and there she meets a bouncer named Ben and they have a one night stand together that goes completely wrong. It is honestly embarrassing, really bad, hilarious to read about one night stand is bad. Little does Reese know though that when she starts her job in Miami, Ben is also starting his job in Miami. So both of them end up working at this, I think law firm, I'm pretty sure. It's quite forbidden. There is a no fraternizing policy here and they immediately can't stand one another or steer clear of one another because of the humiliating night that they had together. But slowly they start realizing their feelings for one another and confessing them and the whole nine yards. I honestly love this book. I want to reread it um, because it was one of the first romances that I've ever read. And I've more recently read the first book in the series and I hated it. Uh, so I think I might reread it to see if it actually still is one of my all-time favorite romances. Then we have one of my most recent five-star reads. We have Just a Heartbeat Away by Cara Bastone. Oh my word, this book is so good, y'all. It is amazing. This is an age gap romance uh, as well. <laughs> so our heroine in here, Via, she was a kindergarten teacher a couple years ago and our hero's son was one of her students. The hero in here, Sebastian, whenever his son was in Via's class, his wife ended up passing away. And so Via kind of gives him tips to help him better provide for his son and now being a single father gives him things that he could do, resources, resources he can call, checklists to do, really tries to help him get his life back together because she can see he's kind of neglecting his kid right now. And so she's trying to push him a little to help him be a better father. And he 100% agrees with her and really appreciates her for what she did for him. It is years later, I think maybe three or four years later, his son is older, but uh, whenever Sebastian and Via come in contact again, he realizes that she now works at his son's new school as the student counselor. And Sebastian now works as a lunch duty a parent at lunch and so they now work in the same school together. The workplace part in this book isn't really a big thing but they do end up working to together. They go to um, professional development meetings, they go to team bonding meetings, they do a bunch of happy hours with the people at work. Like they work together, they go to school together basically. They see each other in school all the time. This book is so good. It is so slow burn and angsty and the pining in here is Fan freaking tastic. I love that talk of age gaps in here because he is way older than her. He's in his 40s, she's in her 20s, and he doesn't think that he deserves her because she's so young. And he thinks and believes that she should be uh, dating younger men. She claims that she has an older soul and she just wants to have a happy family and have kids of her own in a marriage and a person she can depend upon. And she thinks Sebastian can be that person. And oh, it is 
so cute it is so cute next i have fire in you by jennifer l armentrout this is book number six in the wait for you series but you don't need to read the other books to read this one um the couple in this book do pop up at one point in one of the previous books but it doesn't really matter this book takes place a couple years later so this book is about jillian and brock and this is also another age gap romance on top of it being an office romance and so jillian her father owns this martial arts company and uh, Brock is one of the famous MMA fighters that are a part of his company. When she was growing up, when she was little, uh, she always had a crush on Brock. Brock kind of knew, but he brushed it off because he always thought of her as a little sister because he is way older than her. But a couple years ago, before this book takes place, Brock essentially broke Jillian's heart and she has not forgiven him since. It is years later and she comes to work for her father at his martial arts company and she has no idea that Brock is still there. Now Brock is seeing Jillian in an entirely new light. It is years later and he starts realizing that he might have feelings for this woman, but he knows that he's gonna have to grovel his butt off. <laughs> I don't honestly remember how well the groveling was. I'd have to reread it, but I know that there is groveling in this book. They have to work together in this environment, so there's definitely a workplace romance. Her father is the boss, so that also plays another part into this book. Then I have 30 Day Boyfriend by Whitney G. This is an office romance where the hero and heroine don't really like each other. Um, she is his employee, so he's the boss. She is his employee and he needs a fake fiance for a while. And so she signs this contract um, and she becomes his fake fiance. Even though they don't really like each other all that much and they banter a lot, um, they slowly start to realize through this fake marriage um, that they might have feelings for one another. Um, this is really short. This I originally read it on Audible Escape and it was still a thing. This book is just a short novella that has a bunch of angst in it and I love angst in my romance books and so I just really like this one. This is an office romance because of the boss and employee dynamic. They work in the same company. I don't remember which company um, but she kind of feels obligated to say yes <laughs> so because he is her boss so yeah then i have plus one by alethea romig okay so this is another boss employee dynamic relationship so our heroine i believe she works for hr um and so she she comes across the hero of this book in the office one day in the office bathroom screwing another employee and she's like uh, no. <laughs> Earlier that day, her mother ended up calling her and basically berating her about not having dates ever for weddings and family get togethers. And so she sees this as a perfect opportunity for a blackmail. <laughs> so she decides to blackmail this man to be her plus one at this wedding and to pretend that they've been dating for quite a long time. Little does she know though that he's just going along with it because he's had this long 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 crush on her i really found the office workplace dynamic in here to be quite interesting uh and quite hilarious the way that she caught him and decided to blackmail him very 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 funny then i have secret santa by katie wilde this is a christmas romance but like you don't need to read it during the christmas season this book is about emma and she's barely making ends meet in her apartment she's about to, her apartment's about to be like taken away from her because she has not been able to pay rent she can't turn on the heat she's just trying to find a job to pay her bills then luckily she ends up finding a job i believe as a receptionist in this um company this like a uh, furniture making company because uh the previous recep receptionist is about to give birth so the book starts out with her being trained and getting ready to take over this receptionist position and she's super excited and super grateful that she has this job she loves this job she loves her new boss however the boss's son who works um in like the wood shop area making the uh wooden furniture items uh she's pretty sure that he hates her even though they've never spoken a word to one another she just thinks that he hates her because he's always glaring at her and giving her these weird dirty looks little does she know that that's him actually giving her like flirty longing looks and like she has no idea um he is very attracted to her um and hasn't ever like really like said anything about it she just thinks that the boss's son hates her which uh she is very put off by and very scared about because she does not want to lose this job she needs this job but it is christmas time during the time of this book and uh they do a secret santa at their company and uh emma's secret santa may or may not be gifting her uh, something she's always wanted. This is really funny because our hero, he's just super gruff and demanding and doesn't really know how to flirt with women. And our heroine has never really been flirted with, like no one's really flirted with her before or like come onto her before. And so she's like, what's going on? 
<laughs> so it's honestly like really funny at points. I love Katie Wilde's writing. Um, it's very entertaining, so I really enjoyed this one. Then we have Behind Closed Doors by J.L. Berg. This is about Roman and Kara. Roman is the boss to this really popular money-making company and Kara is basically going to be the temp position as his assistant because his full-time assistant is about to give birth I'm pretty sure and so she comes in to be the temporary assistant for him and it is a romance between the two of them it is a little bit forbidden because you're not supposed to do that she knows that she's like that's gonna be my boss for quite a while I cannot have these feelings about him. Roman is actually also very known for being quite the a-hole. <laughs> uh, he's quite mean and gruff and he is really put off by this woman who is quite cheery. <laughs> And so uh, this could also be considered a grumpy sunshine romance, I want to say. But Roman starts developing these feelings for this woman and he can't help, he just can't help but fall for her. And so I really like this one. Of course, we have The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This book is about Lucy and Joshua. They are both assistants and part of this really big company. And um, they're both competing for the same higher position. They have been hating on each other for years and keeping track of them hating one another. And um, this book is just them slowly starting to realize that like, I may not actually hate you, I may just like love you. There's a fine line between love and hate uh, and they don't really know how to express their feelings for one another. This is the epitome of a hate to love romance, enemies to lovers romance. If you haven't read this one, please do. Um, but the office romance in here was quite fun to read about as well because they're both like competing basically for the same company position. Lastly, I have two books a part of the Beautiful Bastard series by Christina Lauren. First being Beautiful Bastard. This is another dynamic where there is a boss and his assistant. This is legitimately hate to love. The biggest hate to love I've ever seen ever. They despise one another. They can't stand one another, but they are forced to work with one another. They have forever always known that the other one is quite attractive and they've always been quite interested in them in a physical sense, but they both hate each other personality-wise. <laughs> but the beginning of this book basically starts out with them finally releasing their pent-up feelings for one another by being together, like, like physically being together in the office. There are so many office scenes of them being together in the office. <laughs> There's one scene in a, in a stairwell that anyone can come in and walk into, so... <laughs> yeah. Then we also have Beautiful Secret by Christina Lauren. This isn't my favorite book in the series. It's actually my least favorite one in the series, um, but it still has the office romance trope. Basically, Ruby and Niall work at this company together in London, and they are both asked to go on this business trip to New York City together. While on this trip, they end up like telling each other they have feelings for one another. Our heroine has always had feelings for this guy, always been crushing on him hardcore. Our hero hasn't really noticed because uh, he was married and he just got through a divorce that was pretty bad, but he's slowly starting to notice Ruby and getting to know Ruby. And it honestly like shows the authenticity of relationships first starting, like with the awkward pauses, the awkward conversation. I really liked the authenticity when it came to those things because in a lot of romance books that you read, everything just goes so smoothly, you know? And <laughs> that's not real life, you know? I really liked that sense of the book where it really like shed light on like the reality of a beginning relationship. But yeah, they end up getting together on this work retreat, this work business trip. Um, so they kind of have to like hide it from their colleagues. So there you have it. Those are 10 office romance recommendations for you. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Mm -hmm.